Thank you to Rover for sponsoring this episode. Subscribe to my channel and get America's number one guide to raising and teaching your dog everything they need to know. Stop pumping me, oh my goodness. Quick thumbs up for this adorable Visla puppy. He doesn't even have a name yet. What would you name him if he was your dog? Tell me in the comments below. Dogs are social, they like being around people. The most convenient, reliable way I know of to get someone to tend to your dog when you can't is with Rover.com and the Rover app. The Rover app gets 4.9 stars on the App Store. Rover is a website that lets you you find dog walkers and pet sitters from drop-in visits to daycare to overnight stays. And you can search, book, and pay all within the app too. This is great news for dogs with separation anxiety or if you have a new dog, since new dogs typically require a little bit more attention, you can choose from all these different services. And there's just tons of five-star people and these are verified reviews. Let's check out Grace. Grace was loving, generous, and fantastic, plus very affordable, we'll definitely use again. She's 5.9 miles away. It's $13 per visit, seems very reasonable to me. And I like that you can have unlimited meet and greets to make sure that you're very comfortable with whomever you choose. You can really narrow it down here based on your dog's weight. You can narrow the price range. So you can really find the perfect person. That's what Rover is about. Visit rover.com slash Zach George and you'll get $25 off your first booking. Here's an interesting fact about Vislas. Their nose, eyes, and nails should all blend with their coats. So they're all kind of similar color. Vislas have been around for about a thousand years and they also have a reputation for kind of stressing when their people leave them alone. Separation anxiety can be difficult to define because we're trying to figure out how a dog is feeling and since dogs can't tell us how they're feeling, we're left to interpret. That leaves a lot of room for error. How do you do your best to determine if your dog has separation anxiety? Well, in my experience, dogs with this issue will typically follow you around everywhere or whine or frantically bark when you're out of reach. See, excessive, repetitive barking, whining, and basing seems to have a way of calming many dogs when they're anxious. They may also have some involuntary physiological responses like dilated pupils or drooling or panting or even sweaty paws. Are your paws sweaty? Nope. They may often attempt to break out of their confinement and concentrate their destructive chewing or digging behavior at exits and windows. And in extreme cases, they don't really care if you leave a toy like this or a bone stuffed with peanut butter behind. And you might notice increased rates of potty accidents too. And it's even probable that many dogs are predisposed to separation anxiety. I mean, think about it. We selectively bred them to interact just with us, whether that be for companionship or for a working partnership. And it's hard to fault our dogs for wanting to be with us all the time, that probably means that you have a wonderful bond with them, and that is so important. Understand though, that just because your dog barks, chews things, or has potty accidents when you're away, does not mean that he necessarily has separation anxiety. That actually is very common with puppies, but it's also a sign of anxiety with many dogs as well. But for whatever reason, he's anxious. Maybe he's looking for his dad. Maybe he's just bored. A majority of dogs who do these things, they're just bored or not properly house trained yet. If your dog is under five months old, much like puppy is over here, your dog is probably exhibiting a lot of the symptoms that I've gone over so far. But this is really normal for puppies and you wanna do your best to avoid having them spend too much time alone at that age anyway. A study in the Journal of the AVMA was designed to look at risk factors and behaviors associated with separation anxiety, and it had some pretty interesting results. The study looked at records from the Tufts University School of Veterinary Medicine Behavior Clinic of 400 dogs. 200 of them had pre-identified separation anxiety, defined in this study as showing signs including destruction, inappropriate elimination, or excessive vocalization that occurred only when their person was absent, and 200 control dogs. Dogs that acted hyper attached, you know, by following their people around excessively or starting to get anxious when they notice departure cues like putting on shoes or getting keys and getting excessively excited to greet you upon return were significantly associated with separation anxiety. Many have wondered, including myself, if a dog being separated from their mom at a young age might contribute towards them having separation anxiety. That hypothesis, however, was not supported by this study. Most often, resolving separation anxiety comes down to making sure your dog is getting plenty of mental and physical stimulation, along with preparing them for being alone ahead of time. Long term, as most dogs mature and adapt to our way of life, they tend to get more comfortable when you leave them alone. But if you want to speed up that process, exercise them regularly. A study in the journal PLOS One found that the largest environmental factor significantly associated with separation anxiety was the amount of daily exercise a dog received. See, if your dog has a serious physical outlet, they're a lot more likely to just chill when you're gone. Giving 
your dog a proper outlet for their excess energy just before you leave them alone may be all you need to do for immediate relief. Dogs are incredibly smart and they have a way of picking up on those very subtle cues that indicate that they're about to be left alone. Focus on identifying that first trigger that really clues them in that your getting ready to leave routine is underway. Once you identify these early cues, you wanna to start to condition your dog to look forward to these events. So instead of, oh no, you're leaving, we want, oh boy, I get something I want. I'm gonna pick these up, I'm gonna jiggle them, I'm just gonna give him a little treat. So we're trying to get him to associate the sound of the keys with getting a good treat. Drop them and look at it, he's automatically looking at me. So it looks like he's already starting to make that association. Once you've done this exercise for a few minutes, you might then want to start doing something that's a little more realistic. Maybe your keys are on your table like this. Yes, and it's important to do these when you're not completely focused on your dog. So when you're just chilling out, watching TV or whatever, pick up the keys, jingle them, give your dog a treat. Now I'm gonna pick them up a little more realistically and just toss them down. If you pick up your keys frequently when you're not actually going to leave and you provide a good consequence, your dog isn't going to associate the keys with you leaving every time. And so once they're getting that, then you might pick up your keys, walk towards the door, and then just walk back over here, right? See, sometimes you might do that. It doesn't mean you're gonna leave every time. These are the kind of exercises you do really early on in the training process that are very short term and just start to give you a little bit of traction. And even if your dog isn't anxious, you should still do exercises just like this to keep these problems from arising in the first place. Maybe your dog tends to figure out that when you put on your jacket that you're about to go somewhere. See, sometimes when I put on my jacket, I just sit down and hang out. This is how you get them feeling good about you picking up your keys or putting on your jacket or your shoes or whatever. So if your dog associates your going to work routine with getting something great and you don't always leave, then you're well on your way to reducing their anxiety. Oh, looks like he got a little anxious that time there. So I left him alone a little bit too long. I wanna get back in there before that barking and that anxiety really rises to the surface. Since many dogs with separation anxiety, especially the extreme separation anxiety, aren't gonna be very accepting of a bone, even if it's filled with peanut butter when you leave, you've gotta condition your dog to like these ahead of time. And the way to do that is to introduce this to them in moments when they are not anxious, like right now. And so you might do things like jiggle the keys, give them a bone. One way to measure success is that he continues to engage with this bone while I'm out of the room for a moment. Oh, now look at that. Isn't that interesting? He stopped. So that might be a sign that he's a little anxious because we know he loves that peanut butter inside there. I'm gonna kind of spy on him. So right there, he's realized that I'm gone. I saw him glance up, but that's all right. He went right back to the bone. So this is a sign that he's comfortable and he's content. I'm gonna come back in before he starts barking and doing all those other things that dogs with separation anxiety do. And let your dog enjoy the bone for short periods of time throughout the day and do this really often. The next thing you'll wanna do is get your dog really comfortable with spending some time alone in the area where you're gonna leave them when you do eventually leave. But keep in mind, dogs with extreme separation anxiety don't do very well in crates most of the time. Instead, dog-proof a part of your house where your dog can't really do any damage and where you can tolerate accidents. Put them in that area and then let them out before they become anxious. That way they slowly get comfortable with being in that area. And in the beginning, you might just do this literally, have them alone for seconds at a time. See, by easing your dog into this whole idea of being alone, we're trying to make it easier for them to accept us being gone for longer and longer periods of time. Come back in. Gonna pick up the bone right here. Hey, you did a good job and I'm gonna put the bone up. So now he's gonna look forward to that bone the next time it comes out, hopefully. Now don't get me wrong, this is easier said than done because you have to do these things consistently over a period of weeks for most dogs. Try to keep these home alone toys like this special so that your dog only has them when they're actually home alone or when you're doing training sessions like we're covering today. Now if your dog does destroy something while you're away or otherwise, that's not their fault. It's your job to control the environment, so don't punish them for that. If your dog seems unusually anxious or this behavior is new, you may wanna to talk to your vet about a potential underlying medical issue too. Don't rush and be prepared to take a step back as necessary. Only you are gonna know when the time is right to let your dog have the general run of the house. This process can take a few months in some cases, and you may never be able to completely cure your dog's separation anxiety in extreme situations, but you can almost certainly reduce it over time if you implement the tips 
points we covered today. In the meantime, while you're working through this, it's a good idea to find alternatives to leaving your dog alone, like having a friend or a relative spend some time with your dog. Our sponsor Rover can make that very easy for you too. What is your name gonna end up being? Tell me in the comments below what you think the best name would be. Click thumbs up for puppy. Go to rover.com slash Zach George and you'll get $25 off your very first booking with Rover too. Subscribe to my channel and get my best selling book on raising and teaching your dog everything they need to know. I'll have those links below. Good job, puppy, you did amazing. See you guys in the next video. Walk in a circle around me and keep doing it indefinitely. Wow, this dog is smart.